Thank you. Welcome everybody to this webinar that is organized by the Euro NMD European Reference Network for Neuromuscular Disorders and in collaboration with the European Reference Network for Rare Neurological Disorders and the European Academy of Neurology. Um, today we have a guest uh, that uh, requires no introduction. I'm sure that everybody in the audience knows already Professor Bjorn Ud, a very renowned clinical neurologist that has dedicated uh, lately to neuromuscular research, essentially. is the director of the Tampere uh, Neuromuscular Center in Finland since 2014. We don't need to talk about his many, many papers. He wrote over 300 and uh, is a very non-physician for all the good reasons. He's a thoughtful person, he's a sensible uh, clinician, and he has a sharp observation uh, spirit. Uh, as you know, he, he's, he described uh, the titinopathy that has his name, uh, the Ud distal uh, myopathy, that is an autosomal dominant disease that appears usually after 35 years of age. Uh, I, I will mention that. <laughs> okay. Anyway, I'm just uh, uh, increasing the appetite of the, yeah. of the attendants. Very oh, fine. So obviously he's a very well-known distal myopathies expert and we are very honored and thankful to Bjorn to honor us with his presence. Thank you, Bjorn, the floor is yours. Thank you so much, uh, Antonio, and hello everybody online. Uh, I will give you an overview of the current understanding of the distal myopathies and uh, we will uh, see if I, we have a few minutes at the end for eventual questions. So uh, what are the distal myopathies? Uh, well, um, uh, you have to have the first symptoms of muscle weakness in the distal parts of your limbs, so hands and feet. Uh, they may or may not later progress to proximal muscle weakness as well but uh, that is uh, variable. Uh, and there is another uh, need uh, in order to uh, nominate the disease as a distal myopathy. It can't belong to any other of the known diseases, uh, which occasionally have very distal presentation. FSH is uh, one typical, and as you know, myotonic dystrophy type one is very distal in its weakness, but there are so many other features that you hardly ever mistake that. There is one mutation in titin uh, causing H. Murph titinopathy, which usually uh, comes with a respiratory uh, defect in the beginning, but some of them, as with one uh, specific mutation, it can uh, start as a distal uh, leg uh, weakness. There are scapuloperoneal syndromes, FHL1, 32, uh, which uh, have a, a, a distal preference. And uh, uh, among the congenital myopathies, DNM2. But there are, of course, uh, then the facial weakness and other features. You uh, hardly ever mistake them for a distal myopathy. But uh, uh, we have uh, difficulties with nemaline and rodcore myopathies. Uh, there are many genes, as you will see also, I will mention later, uh, 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 nebulin in this uh, category. Um, and uh, of course, the uh, inclusion body myositis uh, can have very obvious finger weakness, but usually uh, you can't uh, mistake that uh, because of the heavy uh, quadriceps atrophy and uh, also other features, of course, on muscle biops. Uh, Cavellin, teletonin may occasionally uh, present us uh, uh, with a distal uh, weakness in the beginning. We have some glycogenosis, brancher and debrancher enzyme defects, and also lipidosis. Uh, usually they uh, present 
as not as distals, but in some cases they may. That's the same with uh, Pol1 uh, mitochondrial myopathy. And we have a non-muscle gene uh, disease, nephropathic uh, cystinosis, uh, which has a muscle phenotype um, as well, and that's distal. Some amyloid myopathies, uh, myeloma induced, may uh, have distal weakness, and uh, recently uh, collagen uh, 12A1 mutations uh, with um, uh, EDS syndrome uh, combined with myopathy may uh, occur as a, a distal with a distal presentation. So we now have more than 30 different types of distal myopathies. And uh, of course, I can't go through them all in very much detail, but we will uh, touch upon most of these. Uh, the red ones are the more recent uh, forms identified, and uh, we are still uh, having unidentified genes for distal myopathy, so there are more genes uh, upcoming. Uh, in this slide, uh, the red ones are the more frequent ones. So that means they occur in different populations with different uh, uh, mutations uh, and have uh, been seen in, in many countries. So not just uh, in uh, regional um, areas. Uh, the problem is that many are still undiagnosed and many are still still confused with neurogenic uh, uh, CMT. Uh, we have some long studied families uh, where uh, they have, uh, these distal myopathies have been mistaken for um, uh, neurogenic uh, CMT. Uh, so is there any clinical uh, head hallmarks you can uh, pay attention to? Yes, we have three. Um, and uh, one is uh, the preserved EDB muscle. If you see this uh, in a uh, patient with a hanging foot and foot drop, uh, then it can't be neurogenic because the uh, nerve um, uh, serving EDB muscles is the same as uh, uh, serves anterior muscles. Uh, so you can't have a neurogenic condition with these uh, um, uh, well-preserved EDB muscles. Uh, the same uh, actually <clears throat> is seen when you ask the patient to walk and stand on heels, and he can't, uh, but the toes are lifted. Uh, and then you again have a, 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 a toe extensor function left, uh, which usually not is the case with with a neurogenic. And also, if you find spared ankle reflexes in a patient with uh, these legs, uh, you should uh, uh, sort of uh, start to think of, of a myopathic uh, condition. Muscle MRI is very important for the uh, assessment of the distal uh, phenotype and also for um, uh, diagnostics, as uh, we may have uh, unknown, previously unknown variants in genes uh, uh, previously associated with distal myopathies, and you don't know if that new variant um, is actually the cause, and then you can make use of muscle MRI to uh, sort of see if it fits or not. So we have three patterns. We have uh, one uh, group of genes that is uh, taking more the anterior compartment muscle uh, as with uh, dominant titine. Uh, the uh, slow myosin heavy chain may, uh, MYH7, GNE, nebulin, BCP, and Desme. Then we have another category of genes uh, which uh, uh, take more the posterior compartment like uh, 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 the my myoshi type of um, uh, distal myopathy and the ano5 and then we have um, also I can see this now because they are in the way of my okay myotilin of course and uh, uh, we have 
um, uh, the uh, M terminal part of the uh, uh, filamin C, um, uh, which uh, also, uh, when mutated, causes this very heavy uh, calf muscle uh, destruction. We have a new one, uh, uh, specific form of uh, ribin receptor. And then we have some genes that uh, can uh, be both uh, heavily anterior and posterior at the same time. And these are uh, the Velander uh, disease gene, TR1. Uh, we have a new diagenic form I will tell you about. We have the LDB SASP. Uh, we have recessive forms of distal titinopathies, and we have act, the new uh, actinin-2, alpha-actinin-2, and um, atrin-3. Uh, we will uh, have a look at these in the next slides. Uh, so uh, the lane distal myopathy caused by MYH7 uh, gene defects is probably the most widespread uh, distal myopathy uh, all over the world. Why is that? Uh, well, uh, we have uh, identified several uh, different mutations in rather small populations. Uh, so four in Finland, three different in Norway, uh, three in the Valencia re uh, region in Spain, uh, four um, in the western part of Australia. Uh, and that just tells me that um, uh, you have to have uh, these mutations in all populations. So if you have not seen any MYH7 and uh, distal myopathy uh, in your population, uh, there is something wrong. However, the uh, clinical effects and phenotype may uh, vary quite highly uh, in severity. We have the more severe form with operated scoliosis, uh, heavy neck weakness uh, and difficulties to walk, uh, whereas we can have the very mild form with just hanging big toe and not much else in a 30-year-old male. Uh, imaging, again, very important. We have the uh, uh, first uh, uh, fatty uh, changes in uh, tibialis anterior uh, and uh, nothing at all in the early stage on the uh, proximal muscles. And in the uh, late stages, uh, you have all anterior compartment muscles, also early uh, medial gastrox, and uh, some diffuse uh, atrophy more than fatty degeneration in the proximal muscles. But uh, uh, there is high, as I indicated, high uh, variability. Uh, so in, in the very severe case, uh, you have uh, both anterior and heavy posterior involvement. So uh, uh, just uh, be careful about uh, uh, not excluding MYH7 too fast. Here is just uh, some more images to uh, show the variability uh, in different cases and also the uh, sternocleido uh, uh, degeneration in, is uh, very uh, pronounced. Uh, muscle biopsy, does it help? Yes, uh, I think so. Uh, we have uh, uh, some diffuse core-like structural changes in uh, the fast fibers, uh, uh, type 1 fibers, and um, not in the bigger um, uh, uh, type 2 fibers. And uh, seen here with uh, immunohistochemical uh, staining of the fiber types, the reds are the 2A fibers, and the brown are the uh, fast uh, uh, the, the slow type 1 fibers, and you see uh, the uh, heavy distribution uh, difference uh, with the smaller um, type 1 fibers compared to the type 2 fibers. Um, mutations uh, in uh, MYH7 are restricted more or less to a specific region of the um, uh, myosin uh, heavy chain protein. Uh, so in the last part of the tail, um, uh, in uh, uh, the region of uh, positions in the gene between uh, 1500 and 1800, uh, whereas if you have 
uh, mutations in the ultimate uh, last part of the gene. Uh, you will not get the distal myopathy phenotype, but the hyaline body myopathy. And as you know, uh, mutations in uh, the more N terminal regions, the head and the neck region, uh, cause mainly cardiomyopathies. Uh, so, uh, the Willander distal myopathy was actually the first well described uh, uh, distal myopathy. In a PhD thesis already uh, more than 70 years ago uh, in Sweden. Late onset disease, uh, most of them present with uh, extension weakness uh, of the, uh, in the in fingers, more uh, in the first place index finger, uh, but uh, a smaller proportion present with the foot drop before the finger weakness. Slow evolution uh, and dominant uh, inheritance. Uh, CK normal, just mildly elevated, and the rim vacuoles on, uh, on the muscle biopsy. Uh, so we uh, worked on our families and Swedish families and uh, were able to identify the uh, causative gene, uh, uh, TIA1, uh, uh, um, uh, found a mutation in the Nordic countries uh, to cause uh, the disease. Um, later, we have uh, seen uh, a few other mutations uh, in other populations as well, and there is one uh, paper in uh, uh, preparation for, for that. Um, so we have hundreds of uh, patients in, in our Nordic countries, uh, but uh, you may also remember that uh, we had a large emigration from uh, our countries 100 years ago. Uh, to uh, other places, mainly overseas. So we have these uh, uh, also in, in, uh, in the States and Canada. Just to show you the finger extension weakness and uh, from the back, you can't see anything actually. Uh, this looks very normal. Uh, later on, you have also thinner atrophies uh, and uh, some of them as indicated may start with the lower leg. Um, uh, anterior uh, weakness and uh, ankle dorsi flexion. So um, we have, uh, if, if that uh, uh, defect in the anterior muscles of the lower legs uh, is very heavy, uh, you have the onset in the lower legs, um, but uh, in other cases you have uh, both anterior and uh, uh, some posterior involvement on the legs uh, and uh, still uh, even in the advanced stage, uh, nothing much on the proximal thigh muscles. Uh, so TIA1 is an interesting gene because uh, we have now <clears throat> many more diseases and genes involved in the stress granule uh, 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 RNA handling pathway. Stress granules uh, are uh, complexes of uh, proteins uh, that um, can stall uh, the translation of uh, RNA, and uh, they are very important. They are heavily dynamic, and uh, we have uh, shown that uh, the mutation uh, then uh, uh, causes um, uh, this dynamic to be uh, abnormal. The mutation is in the last end of the gene, which has a prion-like domain, and we have 200 other genes uh, with that prion-like domain, and uh, uh, are also um, many of them now involved in, in RNA handling. So uh, after we identified the uh, founder mutation, uh, we worked on uh, many uh, more families that did not have any clear mutation in TIA1, but the same phenotype. And over the uh, years, we were able to show that uh, those uh, were caused by a totally new mechanism, a digenic cause. So you need two different gene defects to cause the disease. Uh, and that was a very large collaboration over many uh, countries uh, to clarify that. How uh, were we able to show that? Well, as I tell, told you, uh, we had uh, 
after the uh, initial uh, identification of uh, the founder mutation, uh, we had uh, very many patients left with the same phenotype. Half of them had a very frequent SNP polymorphic uh, change in the same area in the last exon. And that is very frequent in the population. So 1% of us have that variant, that polymorphism. So of course, it could not be the cause of, uh, of the uh, disease in these patients. But we uh, thought that it has to mean something um, because of the uh, different um, uh, 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 frequency in, in that population compared to the population in all. And uh, after years and years uh, uh, using our gene panels, uh, in these patients, uh, previously known Paget disease-linked sequestosome 1 mutations repeatedly popped up. So in the end, the vast majority of our uh, 19 unsolved well under like cases had a previously known sequestosome 1 mutation um, as part of the concept. The disease phenotype is exactly the same, both on uh, MRI and clinically and uh, also on the muscle biopsy. Because the two genes are totally independent, you can have both uh, recessive uh, uh, pedigrees and dominant pedigrees, uh, depending on how uh, these uh, variants uh, then happen to segregate in the family. And that made it, uh, of course, even more complicated in the beginning until we understood how it goes. Uh, so the phenotype we already considered um, and these sequestosome mutations, uh, which are uh, in that diagenic combination, they are previously known to cause Paget bone disease. But in our patients with the genic distal myopathy, there is no Paget bone disease. And we even checked 50 Paget patients with the same, exactly the same uh, uh, sequestosome mutations, and they did not have that TR1 variant at all. So how comes that um, that combination uh, is then causing uh, uh, distal uh, rim vacuolar myopathy and, uh, instead uh, uh, and not the budget bone disease. Well, again, we uh, have uh, uh, the explanation through uh, that um, uh, uh, highly regulated uh, stress granule uh, dynamics in the muscle. Um, so um, P62 protein from uh, the sequestosome gene uh, we showed was also involved in uh, stress granule hardening. And when both together work on that, uh, uh, the, the SNP uh, and uh, the sequestosome, uh, then the dynamics is even more disturbed. Okay, so now then to uh, tibial muscular dystrophy, as uh, you heard in the introduction, this was the distal myopathy I started to work on. I saw the patients already 40 years ago, and uh, it took us a long time, of course, uh, with previous techniques to identify the uh, uh, titin uh, gene defect underlying uh, this disease. As you can see, it's very restricted uh, usually to uh, just the anterior compartment muscles. Uh, you can have in the late stages also some hamstring uh, involvement, uh, but um, uh, not symptomatic. Um, uh, so, uh, starting after age 25, usually after age 40, um, and uh, you can have then uh, the foot drop uh, uh, involvement, uh, and after age 60, 60, 75, walking can be mildly impaired due to uh, also proximal weakness. CK again, just mildly elevated, and then um, nothing in the face and, uh, or in the upper limbs. We have uh, 
a lot of patients in Finland with this because of a founder mutation again uh, and the prevalence of that founder mutation uh, indicates that um, uh, or uh, tells us we have uh, some 1000 patient uh, despite that uh, late onset and we have actually diagnosed uh, molecularly already uh, more than 500. So uh, titin, as you know, is the biggest uh, protein in nature, extremely huge, uh, uh, one micrometer long, and the mutations causing uh, tibial muscular dystrophy are located in the very um, uh, ultimate end of that protein. Uh, titin, as you know, uh, causes a lot of different uh, disease phenotypes. We have congenital myopathies by allylic uh, uh, titinopathies, usually with uh, two truncating uh, variants uh, on both alleles, um, uh, with or without cardiomyopathy. These are distributed all over the uh, gene. Uh, we have a very specific uh, type of titinopathies, as I already mentioned, the uh, HMERF disease respiratory myopathy with early respiratory failure, uh, you, uh, mostly uh, associated with uh, dominant mutations in exon 344, uh, why uh, this specific exon uh, harbors uh, that disease capacity is still unknown. And we have in the uh, C-terminal part, the M-band uh, domain of the protein um, mutations that uh, cause uh, uh, um, among others, uh, um, uh, uh, also uh, congenital forms, biallelic forms, but also the emery dreyfus type of uh, uh, phenotype, usually without major cardiomyopathy. And then we have this, uh, this tibial muscular dystrophy uh, uh, defect in the very last part. The peculiarity with this dominant disease is that if you uh, have this um, uh, in major uh, titan uh, mutation on both alleles, on both parents, you get a totally different phenotype. So uh, early onset uh, limb girdle starting in the childhood and uh, uh, causing loss of uh, uh, walking capacity uh, after 20, 30 years and uh, late uh, contractures. And you can see here the total loss of muscle uh, at the same age, uh, uh, comparable to, to just the partial loss of the muscle in, in the heterozygote with the gluteus uh, 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 minoris, uh, the hamstrings and the tibial anterior lesions. So now uh, we know, of course, of many more mutations uh, causing uh, tibial muscular dystrophy in different uh, populations. Uh, uh, we had uh, even uh, some we first thought were um, uh, dominant, but uh, later have proven to be uh, recessive. Uh, so uh, we have um, uh, truncating variants, uh, meaning nonsenses and trim shifts in uh, the two last exons. Uh, either in uh, uh, homozygosity or in compound heterozygosity with another truncating variant uh, causing uh, the new form of uh, juvenile recessive distal uh, titinopathy. So what is that? Well, that came uh, first uh, to us uh, from a Portuguese family uh, with a young lady having a heavy uh, distal uh, weakness, uh, nothing in the upper limbs, uh, and the parents were healthy. And uh, as you can see here, anterior compartment, but also heavy soleus involvement, uh, which is different from uh, the dominant form. Um, now, uh, she, uh, we found a homozygous titan uh, variant in uh, that uh, young lady, uh, which we already knew. We had identified that uh, in Spanish families uh, that looked dominant in the first case. Uh, but in this family, parents were uh, healthy at late age. 
so it had to be uh, recessive. And then we started to look at our uh, Spanish families. So here is one. Uh, we had the Iberian founder mutation, we call it in the uh, last exon. Uh, but the mother carrier of that uh, uh, mutation was healthy. Uh, so uh, we had to uh, look for other uh, possibilities. And as you can see, again, the combination of anterior uh, compartment and heavy soleus uh, defect uh, already at the earlier ages than the dominant form. So we had uh, muscle um, uh, from that uh, Spanish family, and uh, you can see here blotting titin uh, in uh, uh, the homozygous fin major uh, uh, limb girdle form. You can't identify any titin protein because the uh, uh, last part of the, the titin protein is lost. Uh, in the heterozygote, uh, we have uh, a reduction to half of the proteins uh, fragments. Uh, and here in the Spanish uh, case, uh, you can see no titine is identified, which meant there has to be something also on the other allele, which we did not know of. And then we uh, continued sequencing and found uh, a paternal uh, uh, frame shift variant uh, on the other allele to explain uh, that uh, complex uh, system. And to make it even more uh, complex and difficult, here is one French family we also thought uh, was a dominant family because it looked uh, dominant. And uh, uh, we had identified a, a frame shift in, in the second last exon. But uh, with that uh, experience from the Portuguese and Spanish families, uh, we went back to this family and thought, yes, it, the phenotype is too severe at the earlier ages than what we see with the, the dominant uh, uh, TMD uh, cases. So we started to look into that. And uh, again, uh, we uh, went through um, Western blotting and saw that no titine is identified. It meant that both alleles uh, uh, make uh, uh, titines uh, that um, uh, do not have any C-terminus at all. So we had to have something on the other allele as well again, and then uh, continued sequencing and found uh, um, uh, from the mother and um, uh, uh, on the mother side, uh, another uh, frame shift in combination with uh, this uh, previously known uh, uh, second last exon frame shift. So she was biallelic frame shift on titine. And uh, then uh, in the sun, uh, we identified uh, a third uh, uh, frame shift uh, variant. So three different recessive frame shift uh, variants uh, uh, segregating uh, in the family, causing a pseudo dominant family. Uh, afterwards, we have uh, seen this uh, juvenile onset recessive um, uh, distal titinopathy. Many other families, uh, some of them are already uh, published uh, and some are not. Uh, we have uh, in Balkan uh, populations a founder mutation, uh, and uh, we have also a new one uh, in uh, southeastern uh, European populations. Uh, these are two different uh, uh, nonsenses in the second blast uh, exam. Now, uh, the, the new forms, uh, and I will take up uh, 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 actininopathies, uh, distal actininopathy caused by uh, dominant mutations in uh, alpha actinin 2. Uh, we started with three uh, Spanish Basque families and one Swedish family. Uh, they have an adult onset of uh, lower limb distal weakness, uh, slow progression also to proximal weakness, and uh, they uh, may have loss of walking uh, at late stages. Uh, CK very variable from normal up to thousands. Uh, and we again have the rim vacuoles, I have some cytoplasmic bodies and myofibrillar disarray. 
uh, but uh, no uh, cardiomyopathy. Uh, uh, alpha actin in two uh, variants may also cause cardiac disease, but not in these families. So alpha actin in two protein is very important in the C disc, uh, binding uh, these big uh, filament parts together. Uh, so uh, binding titin, nebulin, uh, and uh, and also together with uh, other known uh, uh, distal myopathy genes like uh, um, uh, myotilin. Uh, and uh, uh, we uh, have many uh, well-known uh, disease genes uh, around here, uh, alpha B crystalline, uh, we have uh, back three uh, and filamin C in the region as well, uh, and teletonin in, in the end of titan. <clears throat> so these were the families we worked with, the extensive families, and uh, the segregation was uh, complete. Uh, for the MRIs, we have a more variable picture than in the previous uh, disorders. Uh, so we have may have very mild anterior and uh, medial gastroc, and even asymmetric in, in this case. Uh, and uh, here, this patient, uh, we have also extensive uh, thigh quads involvement, a bit asymmetric again. Um, and um, uh, Dr. Magnus heavily uh, involved. Uh, whereas in the Swedish family, we have the uh, vastus, uh, muscles, so all three of them, uh, with sparring of uh, rectus femoris, and uh, uh, on the lower legs, both anterior and posterior compartment uh, involvement. Uh, so we have another disease. Uh, uh, now we uh, already identified uh, more than 10 years ago. Um, uh, with uh, very heavy posterior compartment involvement, and that's um, uh, mutations in uh, filament C, but uh, not in the regular part, the mid part and the C-terminal part as first uh, identify uh, as myopathy uh, causing uh, defects, uh, but uh, in the N-terminal, in the acting binding domain. Uh, so, um, uh, uh, this was first uh, uh, identified in our Australian family, and later uh, we have more uh, families all around the world, actually. <clears throat> Early adult onset uh, dominant uh, inheritance. Uh, also, uh, hand grip power is lost, uh, and we have tennis players that uh, had, had difficulties to keep the racket. And you can see the uh, atrophy of the uh, thinner muscles. And the mild CK elevations. Uh, the pathology is not specific, no rim vacuoles, no myofibrillar, uh, which is in opposite to mutations in other part of this uh, filament C gene. Uh, very late uh, proximal weakness. And uh, phenotype is very similar in a specific form of DNA JB6. Uh, mutants. DNA GP6 was first identified in, in proximal uh, Limgodo families. <clears throat> and uh, those mutations are in the mid part of the gene. But if you have mutations in the N terminal G, G domain, uh, you can have this uh, very peculiar uh, uh, calf destruction. Uh, and uh, practically nothing in the anterior compartment. And then uh, later on also uh, hamstring and uh, Dr. Magnus uh, involved. Um, so we uh, have uh, reported several different families from different uh, uh, populations uh, with that type of uh, distal myopathy. And one of the more recent uh, forms as you know, uh, Ryan in receptor variants uh, uh, cause usually uh, uh, congenital forms of disease or uh, then um, rhabdomyolysis uh, uh, 
uh, uh, uh, sort of problems uh, or uh, variations of, of that uh, theme. But we had uh, families uh, with uh, adult calf myalgia, usually on uh, uh, sort of uh, uh, activities, um, but we had uh, sports people um, also uh, in our families. Uh, and uh, one of them was even running marathons at the age of 50. Uh, so not very uh, disturbing, but CK was very high in all of them. And uh, when you uh, look at the MRIs, <laughs> in the first uh, uh, place you hardly see anything, but if you look very carefully, uh, you have medial gastrox, fatty replaced and all the others are more or less normal. And that does not harm very much, actually, functionally. Uh, you can also have some uh, solus involvement, but mostly the medial gastrox, and uh, practically nothing on the thigh level. So here again, medial gastrox a bit asymmetric, and also medial uh, uh, solus uh, starting. But um, uh, some of these are older people, so in the age range of uh, 50 to 70, uh, so not very uh, uh, severe disease. On the pathology, however, you can see um, <clears throat> the course, uh, which is a hallmark of Ryden receptor, and you can even by immunostaining for Ryden receptor protein, you can see them. Uh, the, the protein accumulating uh, in that uh, core region. Um, now, something else. We have a mother, uh, as you can see, uh, with uh, a defect uh, ankle dorsi flexion. Uh, nothing in the face, actually. Uh, and um, then we have the son, a uh, bit more uh, severely affected. Um, uh, or er with earlier onset, and also uh, uh, and uh, finger defects. Um, uh, so what is that? It's apparently dominant, uh, but earlier onset. Well, this turned out to be uh, early onset uh, distal uh, nemaline myopathy uh, because of large de uh, deletion in the nebulin gene. Uh, as shown here. Uh, so uh, half of the gene is uh, deleted on one allele and that causes uh, this disease. Um, however, walking is preserved until high age. We had the grandmother also uh, we uh, investigated. Uh, and in the older patients in the muscle biopsy, we see also some nemaline drops. Uh, but in the young, uh, younger age, a patient uh, there were no uh, rods at all. Um, <clears throat> and uh, uh, you can see the, the evolution of the anterior compartment uh, muscle uh, fatty degeneration uh, uh, with age. Um, and then I will take up uh, one uh, other uh, type of uh, distal myopathies, which uh, is actually a group uh, um, uh, that may be confusing uh, because uh, you have both neurogenic uh, uh, changes, uh, uh, especially on EMG, um, uh, and uh, also myopathic uh, features. Uh, so this is <clears throat> now a patient and muscle biopsy from uh, uh, HSPB8 mutated uh, distal myopathy, uh, where we even were lucky to have these uh, images from the immunostainings and biopsies on the front page of neurology at one time. Uh, about that. Um, and so uh, this is a chaperone, uh, uh, like. Uh, uh, Bacteria, for example, like uh, uh, 
also uh, uh, okay uh, DNA JB5 and um, uh, yeah, this uh, chaperon is uh, interacting with uh, the previously mentioned DNA JB6. Uh, we have uh, uh, just uh, last year also uh, published uh, another uh, in this category, the DNA JB2 mutated form of uh, distal neuromyopathy. Um, <clears throat> so we have uh, 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 the combination of uh, uh, rimmed vacuolar and myofibrillar myopathy uh, with also uh, neurogenic changes, as you can see here, uh, the uh, small group atrophies uh, on the biopsies. Um, and this is, of course, uh, because uh, the gene uh, or the protein, the chaperon, uh, is acting uh, in both uh, tissues, both directly on muscle and on, uh, uh, on the uh, motor nerve side. And um, um, uh, this is uh, peculiar in a way that um, in many of these families we have studied, uh, the disease usually starts uh, with the neurogenic, more neurogenic features. And then uh, by age, later on, uh, the myopathic uh, compo compound uh, takes over and they, uh, we have heavy fatty uh, uh, <clears throat> uh, changes in, in, in muscles. So these uh, are more early stages, and you can see the uh, distal uh, pronounced, uh, distally uh, uh, pronounced uh, changes in the anterior compartment. Again, with uh, uh, gluteus uh, uh, minoris, and um, just uh, scattered changes on the uh, proximal thigh. A uh, bit in the same uh, category, uh, I take up uh, the matrin 3 defect. Uh, 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 distal myopathy. Uh, so this is uh, 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 clinically described already uh, in the late 90s uh, from the US in a large family. Um, with uh, adult to late onset, uh, frequently asymmetric, uh, and uh, starting with the ankle dorsi flexion weakness again, um, but some may have uh, onset in hands, uh, and uh, slow progression, uh, later proximal uh, weakness as well, and some may develop uh, respiratory defects. Um, uh, the disease has later uh, been, of course, identified by gene defect in matrin 3 gene. Uh, in different families, they all have the same reoccurring mutation, uh, S85C, and, <clears throat> and uh, independently on, on different haplotypes. Um, so what is the pathomechanism here? Yes, this gene is uh, or protein is also involved in RNA processing uh, and uh, other mutations in that gene are associated with ALS. Uh, so uh, that caused um, uh, some uh, other investigators to uh, actually reclassify that original family also as an uh, ALS family. Uh, but um, we then uh, had a UK family where there were uh, no neurogenic features at all. Uh, so uh, I heavily questioned that uh, reclassification and uh, even went to Halle to see uh, six different families with exactly the same mutation. And uh, there is no ALS with that specific mutation. So we have uh, another group. Uh, which we need to uh, talk about, and that is the myofibrillar myopathy uh, group. Um, uh, most of these myofibrillar myopathies um, have a very distal uh, clinical phenotype. 
But um, as you know, myofibrillar myopathy is defined by pathology uh, by Andrew Engel at the time uh, as uh, C disc alterations and uh, myofibrillar sarcomeric disintegration uh, combined with the abnormal accumulation of proteins. Um, <clears throat> uh, these occur uh, usually as a dominant. Uh, way. Uh, uh, some uh, tend to be uh, understood as sporadic uh, because uh, some are very late onset and the parents uh, may have had uh, other problems or uh, died earlier. Um, we now know of uh, several genes causing uh, myofibrillar or distal myopathy. Most of all, Desmin. Uh, and uh, uh, as you know, desminopathy is a combination of uh, uh, distal weakness with usually cardiomyopathy, and uh, also scapuloperoneal forms have been described. Respiratory involvement may occur. Then we have alpha V crystalline, the other chaperone, which is also uh, named uh, uh, DNA JB, uh, HSP. BB5, actually, not DNA JB5. Um, a few families uh, have cataracts uh, as a specific mark uh, or, or marker of that disease. Uh, and one uh, mutation may cause a late onset uh, disease. Myotelium mutations uh, uh, are uh, quite frequent in that group. so. About 10% of all myofibrillar or distal myopathies have a myotelin defect. Um, and um, uh, myotelin was first associated with uh, limb girdle phenotype, but that uh, was more or less a mistake. Uh, all uh, something like 50 families I have been contacted with uh, have a, a very distal presentation and late on. Uh, TASP uh, uh, LDB3 mutations uh, uh, form a larger part of uh, that myofibrillar or distal category. Uh, and then we have uh, filamin C mutations, less prevalent, usually uh, not that uh, heavily distal, but also proximal weakness. And uh, back three, uh, another chaperone um, uh, with um, uh, earlier onset and severe uh, myofibrillar, but we can have other genes uh, causing that uh, pathology as well as previously indicated. Uh, so just a few words uh, because um, time is uh, passing. Uh, the late onset uh, uh, myotilinopathy, distal myopathy, as you can see the uh, myofibrillar pathology. <clears throat> In the early stages, uh, carrier at the age of 45 does not have any uh, uh, changes uh, on muscle imaging at all. Uh, but um, at age 72, there are both uh, anterior and co posterior compartment um, in the lower legs affected. LDB3 mutated SASP. Uh, this was a family first reported by Griggs uh, in the uh, mid 90s. Uh, and we then, uh, over the time, clarified uh, that family to be uh, uh, caused by, or the disease caused by um, mutations in LDB3 um, uh, gene. There are two major uh, uh, variants known, uh, cause most of the uh, uh, patients and families. Uh, <clears throat> so the 147. AT is a more German uh, origin family, uh, uh, origin mutation, and uh, A165V is French UK uh, in origins. Um, so, just uh, some images on uh, TASP uh, patients, uh, the anterior and posterior and the lower legs, and also in hands, something. Uh, his, uh, this is an uh, interesting uh, case, uh, totally asymptomatic, but uh, mutation carrier at the age of 46. You can see the early changes in 
posterior compartment muscles, but these are uh, still uh, totally uh, not causing any weakness or symptoms. And uh, on the uh, EM pathology, we have these uh, filamentose bundles as the hallmark of that disease. Desminopathy is very important because it goes with the cardiomyopathy and you have to have a early diagnosis, usually uh, not a problem nowadays uh, with the new sequencing technique, but uh, previously uh, it made a challenge. So here are some different um, variations of uh, imaging phenotypes. Uh, we have a peculiarity as with semitendinosus involvement with desminopathy. You can see that turning up in different patients combined if it is combined with the anterior compartment and peroneal, uh, then you have can have the suspicion of the desmin being involved. Uh, just uh, rapidly, uh, some of the recessive uh, diseases, uh, non apa disease um, uh, caused by uh, GNE mutations, nowadays caused uh, GNE uh, myopathy, heavy, uh, this is uh, Again, uh, anterior compartment uh, dominated, but you can have a typical presentations just to uh, make the case. Miyoshi uh, myopathy caused by dysferly mutations, uh, well known uh, to uh, everybody in the myopathy field. Uh, again, starting with the calf destruction and uh, atrophy, uh, but uh, as shown later on, both the LGMD and the uh, distally presenting uh, phenotypes, they uh, turn into one disease uh, after 20 years. Uh, distal uh, ano 5 mutated disease is very similar in a way, but uh, you can note the uh, asymmetry uh, of the calf involvement, which is a hallmark for that disease. Otherwise, uh, very similar in high CK levels, age of onset, and also uh, progression of the disease. Uh, in Korea, uh, they have described uh, several families with early onset ADSSL1 uh, disease, but uh, later reports uh, show that uh, this is not always very distal at all. Just to end up, uh, the first X-linked uh, distal myopathy we recently uh, reported with missense mutations in the small muscle protein X, uh, causing aggregations, rim vacuoles, uh, hand involvement, and also the dorsiflexion of the ankle weakness uh, in the early uh, stages, but it's uh, adult onset. And you can see the imaging taking more of the anterior compartment and the uh, posterior. And you can see the protein aggregations, uh, which also uh, tend to uh, uh, be accommodated, uh, accumulating uh, P62 and uh, some amyloid-like structures. And I think I will just thank our, all our international collaborators and uh, stop there to eventually take a couple of questions if we have time. Antonio can decide. Thank you. Thank you very much, Bjorn. I don't see any questions uh, written down. Um, and the time is over. <laughs> so uh, it's not too bad. I, mm. I just wanted to to tease you with a, a kind of question. Unless you have someone like you that have an encyclopedic uh, knowledge, uh, my feeling is that the teasing of all these clinical and um, genetic and um, um, pathology. Meta details. Pathology, imaging. <laughs> imaging. Yeah. So it, it, this is teamwork for mere mortals like us, isn't it? <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. And uh, But you have to combine all these components. Uh, yeah. Otherwise, uh, uh, you are lost. And what in the case of the Max 5 French family, why didn't you convince yourself that the boy had the autosomal dominant um, form? Why did you go and look for the three frame sheet mutations? Because you already had one, right? Uh, so uh, we've, I actually first 
identified uh, uh, the frame shift uh, in in the boy um, um, in the second last exon. And ah. so because we saw that then also in the mother, uh, we thought it was dominant. Okay, so... The family looked dominant. We had the perfect mutation in the last part of the titan gene. Uh, so why not? But only then afterwards, when we uh, saw uh, that the Spanish um, Iberian found a mutation uh, with the frame shift in the last exon, actually was not dominant as we thought in the beginning, turned out to be recessive. Then we went back uh, to this family because the phenotype was also more severe than expected for them. Yeah, that, that was impressive. Uh, I, I'm going to read a question by Jonathan De Winter. Sorry, Jonathan, I'm not going to unmute you for sake of time. Why are distal myopathies distal? Are these muscles more vulnerable for mutation in this distal myopathy related genotypes compared to uh, limb girdle muscle dystrophy related genotypes? Question mark. Yes, <laughs> the not just one hundred dollar question, but uh, maybe one hundred million dollar question. <laughs> um, <laughs> uh, that is one of our, uh, of course, uh, objectives to try to understand. Nobody uh, has the understanding yet. We know uh, that, um, of course, many genes have many different isoforms. And titan is uh, one of these. And um, uh, we also know uh, to some extent that um, different muscles do not have the same composition and amount of these isoforms. So muscles are individuals. We see muscles as, okay, this is, looks like a normal muscle and this looks like a normal muscle, but um, uh, on the molecular level, they are totally different. And we do not have that concept uh, clarified yet. Well, we have now questions popping, so I don't, uh, I'm going to read them. So Marco Macucci uh, is thanking your lesson and uh, asking about the complications in general anesthesia in this type of myo myopathies, namely the risk for malignant hypertension. Yeah. Not at all. And also, as you know, uh, this uh, uh, issue uh, runs up with uh, uh, Ryan-Rin receptor gene defects. Um, but uh, in uh, the families with this very unusual particular um, uh, medial gastroc uh, defect uh, type, uh, we have actually uh, specifically asked for that, for um, uh, uh, anesthesia complications, and there are no. Okay, yeah. Uh, and the last one is from Ermin van Duivenvoort. Uh, I hope to have said not too wrong. Uh, and she asks about the usefulness of uh, Western blot in titanopathies. Uh, when do you think it's useful to perform? Yeah, yeah. Uh, it's a hard protein because of the size to, to blot uh, in the first place. Uh, so we have different techniques. Uh, we can uh, use uh, the huge, large gels uh, for uh, uh, having also assessment of the higher molecular weight isoforms. Uh, but uh, for the... Uh, problems in the last part of the uh, gene in the M-band region, uh, we have uh, um, uh, custom-made uh, antibodies for uh, several domains in that and, and use that um, as shown in, in, in some pictures here. So it's mega Western. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. Problematic. All right. Thank yeah. you very, very much for your... Thank you. Presence and we hope you to have you around very soon, okay? Very good. Bye-bye. <laughs> Thank you. Bye-bye.